I'm happy to be joined once again by Amanda Paré. Amanda, the Mama Coach Lloyd Minster, thank yes. you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Now we have holidays coming up and yes. this is a stressful time for most people, but if you have children and especially more than one child and you're traveling with a family and you've upset your kid's sleep schedule and they're into Christmas treats, it can really be a recipe for a disaster. So today we wanna talk about how you can maybe avoid some of that. So let's talk about what would your number one recommendation be for dealing with, the, with that over the holidays? Sure, so we know that kids um, thrive with routine. Um, and us being strict on the day-to-day -day routines. So eating and sleeping are two very normal routines that if we can keep them very simu similar as mm -hmm. their day-to-day -day, um, during the holidays, that will help them adjust better. Okay. So with um, sleep schedule, make sure they're getting the amount of sleep that they need in the day. Um, whether you're getting them to catch up with an extra nap mm -hmm. or just make sure their nap schedule kind of stays the same. But most importantly, stick to that bedtime um, and as well the bedtime routine. Uh, eating schedules um, with different events and stuff going on over the holidays. Uh, it's not, sometimes we just <laughs> don't know when we're going to eat, right. right? Or what time. If, you're cut, if your child likes to eat supper at five o'clock, make sure you have something for them to eat for mm -hmm. five o'clock, right? Because their behavior and their mood depends on that meal, right? Um, so pack healthy snacks for when you're in the car, on the go, mm -hmm. or at someone else's house. Bring a little meal for them to eat while they wait. And um, try to bring things comforting. Um, a toy or something. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. And especially with bedtime and a new sleep environment. Mm -hmm. So try to make sure that they have things from home. So a pillow, a blanket, a lovey, a sound machine. Um, plan ahead. Ask if they have a playpen or a crib that you could borrow. Mm -hmm. Bring their crib sheet from home that they slept in for the last few nights and that will be really comforting to them. You can use all of those things in the car and once they're in the playpen or crib mm -hmm. at this other person's house. And, and how about sleeping in a strange bed and a, just a strange environment? And you know, a lot of times it'll be okay, kids go to bed early, but then you still have the rest of the family there, you know, maybe singing Christmas carols and enjoying <laughs> celebrating and stuff. So, yes. you know, you don't want to tell everybody in the house to say, okay, you have to be quiet, be quiet. at eight o'clock, right? <laughs> exactly. So uh, uh, what's a, a good way to approach that situation? So if you have a fan or a sound machine, that's often something that um, can drown out the extra noise mm -hmm. and just put it between the child at least a meter away from their head um, and the doorway or the hallway wherever the noise is that okay. can help kind of drown out the noise um, and I say just carry on that extra noise in the house sometimes can can help them sleep too yeah so just kind of be realistic be you know be flexible right. it's not going to go perfectly <laughs> and once they get home you can get them right back on routine and now if we flip the scenario and yes. it, you, it's your house, but you have uh, people coming into your house to stay, whether it be family or friends or, yes. you know, however that happens to be, um, what should you be looking to do? Because kids then are probably going to want to stay up and especially the older ones, right? And maybe right. hang out with grandma and grandpa or auntie and uncle or, or whatever the case is. And, and you don't want to be the bad guy all the time. No. But again, how do you find a balance when you have people coming into your home and, you know, bringing gifts that the kids are going to want to see and food and, and that sort of thing? Yeah. So try to stick to your routine the best you can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talk to them beforehand. Um, in our house we set boundaries, we set limits, so they know that, okay, bedtime is this time. And they'll often try to push that, but right. just trying to stick to your routine and your limits will kind of help um, set them up for success that way. And um, yeah. And, and if anybody <laughs> wants, uh, you know, advice, or not just on this, Amanda, but yeah. just on, on what you do as the mama coach, yes. what's the best way for them to reach you? So um, Facebook, Instagram, um, Amanda, the Mama Coach Lloyd Minster okay. are my um, handles, my page. So they can reach out to me there. Okay. Um, and I also offer free phone calls, phone consults, where we can talk about their child's sleep or if they're having any behavioral issues, anything like that. And then further taking it one step too, is that you actually uh, can be hired for certain sessions as well too, correct? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so again, we'll just have them contact you via social media. And thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll be back again to talk to you later in the month about some other exciting things that you're doing with the Mama Coach. Perfect, thanks.